Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This time I'm talking about difficulty in your game and in my game because it's something that I've learned and adjusted with over the development of my game and I gotta tell you, you can never make your game easy enough. I've never once regretted making my game easier. We all know as developers that we play our games over and over again because we have to. We're testing things out, we're running things over, and we get naturally very good at our games. Way better at our games than anyone on earth will ever get. And so when we're trying to actually adjust the difficulty and play our games for real, we often forget that we're playing at a level far greater than anyone else. And you have to really bring things down and not in a mean way, you really got to dumb things down. So I thought I would give you an example uh, of some stuff that I've done in my game. Uh, let me go back out here. So after a quick prologue, the start of my game takes place right about here. You find yourself dropped and transported on this island. You have the option of exploring to the right or to the left or east and west. And if you happen to go this way, you will discover a cave that you can go into if you want to. Now, most people do end up going in here first, and that's fine, and that's good, because this is actually going to be their first exposure to a traditional level in my game, and so I've purposely made it a very easy cave. In my opinion, this is like a baby's first platformer. This is like it's e like easy easy, almost too easy to the point where you're like is this is this for real? This is this is what's happening. It's meant to be very easy. Um, but people still struggle. I can kind of show you what happens. A lot of times people will go here and they stop here, they're not sure if they can cross, and so what do they do? They try. They die. That's, that's okay, that's fine. People are getting used to, you know, the game. They don't know quite far how, 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 how far they can jump. Um, some people might try to slide jump. They die. Now, the, the stranger people are the people that try it like two or three times. When it's like, clearly you can't make it and they just keep doing this over and over again, you'd be surprised how many times people do this. But again, this I don't judge people too harshly on. Um, what I start to judge people harshly on are the people that do this. Now, they'll, they'll walk this way and this spike comes out and kills them. Now, that's not too alarming because they don't know that that's gonna happen. Even though the spike comes out very slowly, they don't realize, you know, a lot of people see that dot, that black dot, that hole, and it doesn't, it doesn't uh, worry them. They just go into it. Now, the part that's alarming is not the first time. It's the people who do this the second time. So they've got killed by the spike. It reloads. They're here and they do this. And they die a second time in a row by that spike. And then the people who do this the third time and die a third time in a row at the spike. Now, this happens to every like like so many people. This happens to I I just couldn't believe it, um, and and I, I got to be clear on a couple things here. I, I give my game to a diverse amount of people. Some of these people have platinumed, you know, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, Crash Bandicoot, Devil May Cry, what you name it. They're they're seasoned professional, not professional, but they're seasoned gamers. Um, I'm not giving this to my grandma, though I have given the game to people who don't play games just to see what happens. A lot of people, it would surprise you, your friends, the people that you've grown up with playing games your whole life will make these very rudimentary mistakes and you're, I'm just like grabbing my head thinking, why is this so difficult? I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. So you might think, oh, maybe I should take this out of my game. I've left it in. I've left it in because I, th I just think, this is too weird. Uh, and there are a couple people who, not a couple, there are people who correctly avoid this thing and, and do that. But there are a lot of people who die at this spike many, 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 many times. They don't seem to learn their lesson. They know it's going to come out and they just keep running into it. It's, it's very strange. Um, and then, here, here's another thing that happens. So, some people will finally get across this, the, on their fourth attempt, they'll do this. waiting and they do that again I'm not making this up now on their fifth try they do this <laughs> the, 
they do that on their fifth try. So this is just giving you an idea of of what you need to to look out for when you're playing. And again, this is like basic in my opinion. This is learn how to jump. You know, this is learn how to slide. And I've already kind of gone through some of this in the prologue already. Learn how to slide. Now, these spikes, they used to be the same color as the, the wall, the kind of the column here. They used to be purple to look, look more natural. I made them white to sort of stand out and I placed a light there so you would really see them. People still run right into them. Um, now, another thing I recommend doing is, if you can, if you're playtesting your game, get the people, if you're able to, now I know not everyone can do this, but it's so handy, get the people testing your game, if they're friends and family, to record themselves, capture the video of them playing the game so you can watch it yourself. And, added bonus, get them to record their voice. So much detail is given to you in the way people react in the moment and how they sound. Some people talk out loud, they think their thoughts out loud, that gives you extra insights that they won't be able to recall when they're filling out a document later on. So get video, it's so, so helpful. That's a little tip from me. So let's continue the playthrough here. So a lot of people, they start, they die here a bunch, they die here a bunch, they get over here, and this is my, you know, another example of just a jump, you know? Platforming 101, you see a pit, you probably should jump over it, right? Now, when I first had this designed, this platform here was not here. It was just these, this top one here. And I, I distanced these uh, as almost as, as far as I could to represent how far you jump. I wanted it to feel tense. I wanted people to go, yikes, and just make it. Because you do, you just make that jump. But a lot of people ended up just doing this falling and dying and just missing it all the time and I was thinking you know I don't want people I don't want their first experience to be death here you know I didn't want them to feel like they died immediately and I didn't want them to die here and then die here it's just my the goal of my game is to keep people playing you don't want people to get punished you don't you actually in my opinion i've learned at least this is what i've come to while making my game is you don't ever want the player to die and in my opinion good design means the player never dies they only die when a challenge kind of out challenges them it shouldn't be something it shouldn't be something silly or something unpredictable or something that you you can only pass by doing it multiple times. It should be something that you theoretically could get past the first time. Um, and you really do want your players to keep playing the game. Um, I've played games where if it's an indie game that I don't really care about, I'll just keep playing until I die once. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to keep going. So it's like you want to keep people playing. Now... I designed this part here, so these are going to be the platforms that fall. And it's going to be a surprise to players because they don't realize that that can happen. Now, what I do is, I don't put spikes here, I don't put a pit here, I just put solid ground. Meaning, so if you fall and you don't see it coming, and you don't make it, then it's fine. You don't die, you get to keep going. So if you're like this, like, whoa, whoa, it's fine. You can just try again. Um, so you can keep going here. Oh, and then, oh, you fall. It's fine. You're not going to die. It doesn't take you out of it. You still sort of get the feeling, the sting of failure in a way, but you don't get the, the total beatdown of having to do it all over again. So you keep going. I'm introducing people to multiple routes now. It's like, oh, interesting. There's something up there. You can't get to it. Interesting. Maybe I have to come back here or something. Another instance I've got spikes they're lit up by this point people know okay i gotta i gotta slide under these guys jumping they're used to it now they're jumping over here i find most people are good once they get to this area they, they've kind of got it down pat they're like all right cool i get it now there's spikes i gotta slide under them gaps i gotta clear them and now this time these are gonna fall they look the exact same and they're almost in the exact same kind of positioning as the first time they saw them. So they might recognize, okay, these might fall. 
this time there's no ground beneath it. This time it means business. They gotta jump and clear it off. So I'm so trying to train the player naturally and and increase the difficulty naturally. So now here's our first our first experience with a moving platform. Again, basics of platforming games, moving platforms. Some people fall, like some people don't quite get the timing here and I, I get a little worried when I see that because I'm like, oh man, if you struggle with this first, that first platform, the rest of the game is gonna be uh, pretty challenging for you. So I, I've gone through and I've, I've adjusted my game time and time and time again to make it easier and easier. I've never regretted it. I would rather people not die and keep playing the game than get too, uh, too, too frustrated. Some frustration's fine at certain parts of the game, but especially at the start, you don't want people, you don't want people frustrated right away. So again, really easy jumps here. It, it's almost impossible to miss these. Um, and then one more slide. These ones are longer because I'm trying to teach the player like, hey, you can hold down the slide button and slide longer. And that's that. They cross the sign. And they finish the level. Just like that, there's one level. But again, I really want to stress the fact that I've had to adjust that level and other levels over and over again. And I'm telling you, even when you think you cannot make something easier. Even when you're like thinking to yourself, there's no, this is way too easy now. It's still probably 50% harder than it should be. Do not be afraid to make your game easy. That's my tip of the day. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the look of this game, please go to Steam right now and wishlist it. It's called Billy Saves the World. It's a platform adventure game full of value, full of things to discover, full of multiple routes, a branching narrative, tons of enemies and secrets, collectibles, all sorts of stuff. And it's really funny as well. I put a lot of love into it. I'm really excited for people to play it and to carve their own path and see where the game takes them. Again, Billy Saves the World, Steam, give it a wish list. That's all for now. I'll see you in two weeks. Every other Monday, I publish a new video just like this one. Until then, goodbye. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Cooper Peebo. I'm an actor, writer, producer of film, television, and video games. This video was brought to you by my Premium Plus members of my Patreon. Go there now. You can sign up for free, get access to my premium blog. I also do a monthly podcast right here where I talk about all my projects, catch everybody up, and just talk about whatever I feel like. Go to my Discord. It's free. I post a bunch of stuff on my projects as well, including Billy Saves the World a bunch of behind the scenes videos and all this kind of stuff. There's also a special section for paying members as well where you can talk about whatever you feel like, books, movies, music. It's just mostly myself right now talking to myself, but please check it out. And while you're at it, go to Steam, head to Billy Saves the World page and give it a wish list. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching again. Goodbye.